Hello everybody. In this video we will continue looking at UV unwrapping and UV mapping. In a previous video we looked at a very simple example of creating a playing card. Because a playing card by its nature is a two-dimensional flat surface, mapping the texture onto the surface was very easy. Another example that we looked at that was very easy were these dice. Because I created the texture for these dice specifically to work with a polygon primitive cube's default UVs, this example also proved to be very easy. The Rubik's Cube example, on the other hand, was a little bit more difficult. It required cutting edges and rearranging the UVs to fit with the texture map. We were unable to use the Polygon Primitive Cube's default UVs. This next example will further build on what we've learned up to this point. I'm, I'm going to use this box to create a texture for a model that I'm going to create in Maya. A cardboard box like this is really perfect for learning about UV unwrapping and mapping. To create the texture that I'm going to use, I simply unfolded the box. I then placed the box in a scanner and scanned it in. Notice that I've included the dimensions of the box. This will help me model it later. This is a really good texture because not only is it square, but it is also dimensions of 1024 by 1024 pixels. But what if you don't have a scanner readily available? I created a second texture using the, the camera on my phone. This texture is not ideal. Not only is it not square, but the box itself doesn't lay flat on the surface. For this video, I'll be using this less ideal texture because I'd like you to see that you can actually get really good results with this as well. I'll start creating the um, playing card box using a polygon primitive cube. You'll remember that I recorded the dimensions of the box itself. I will be using those dimensions in the width, height, and depth fields so that I can model the box. Remember that the box was two and a half inches wide, three and a half inches tall, and about three quarters of an inch deep. And I'll now create the material for the box by going to my hypershade and creating a blend. I'm going to rename my material. And then in the color channel of my material, I will apply a file. It'll be the image that I took with the camera on my phone, this one here. Returning to my hypershade, I will middle mouse drag the material onto the polygon object. And I'll press six on my keyboard so that I can see the texture applied to the mesh. And with my mesh selected, I will go to UV, UV Editor. Notice that while I see the texture, I'm actually not seeing my UVs right now. To fix this, I'm just going to deselect the mesh and then select it again. And now you can see the default UVs of my mesh. The tools that we will be using are in the UV Toolkit. I'm closing the UV Toolkit because I want to show you where to find it if you don't see it. To reopen the UV Toolkit, all you have to do is, in the UV Editor, go to Tools, Show UV Toolkit. And notice that I can easily redock it in the UV Editor if I wish. The next step that I'm going to do requires that the scale X, Y, and Z of your mesh is set to 1, 1, and 1. If it isn't, all you need to do is freeze the transforms on your mesh. With my UVs selected, I'm going to go to Unfold 
and click on the Unfold button. Notice that unfolding didn't really rearrange the UVs, rather it made the parts more proportional to the actual mesh. You can visualize these UVs being a template which you could fold to actually create the box. Notice that if I select the UV shell, I can move it around and the texture swims around the mesh in the perspective viewport. I'm going to select the face that will be the front of the box, and I'll move it over to the appropriate part of the texture. But with all the edges sewn together, this doesn't quite work. We're going to treat this example similarly to the way that we did the Rubik's Cube. I'm going to select the edges in the interior, and I'm going to go to Cut and Sew, Cut. I'll now be able to select the different parts and move them independently. I'll select the face, that will be the front of the box. This one here that you can see I have selected and I will move it over into the appropriate texture space. I'll select the side of the box and move it to its appropriate place on the texture. And I'll select the other side and move it into its place. This will be the back of the box, and I'll move it right here. And now I'll do the same to the top and bottom of the box. Notice that I'm just roughly placing everything right now. I'll be able to do fine-tune adjustments in a little bit. In my perspective viewport, I'm going to select a single edge. What I want you to notice is in the UV editor, it shows up as two edges. This is in fact the same edge. And because it's the same edge, I can sew them together. Let's select another edge and sew it together. This next edge is going to present a slight problem. You can only sew an edge to itself. Notice that in my UV editor, these edges are not adjacent to one another. And if I try sewing it together, this happens. I'm going to undo that so that we can fix the problem. I will select the face and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees in the UV editor. Now with its proper placement, I can sew them together and it works fine. Moving on to the top of the box, I'll sew its edges as well as the bottom of the box. Notice that I have the same problem where I have to flip the face 180 degrees. Now that I have everything connected, I'm going to select the UV shell. And I'm going to go to the Unfold button again. This will quickly arrange things. And now, switching over to the UV component mode, I'm going to move around the individual UVs so that they conform to the image texture I have here. A box like this is really a perfect way to visualize and understand what's happening with UVs. Think of my 2D texture, this photograph, as a two-dimensional surface that wraps around a three-dimensional form. Now, with my UVs arranged, let's take a look at the actual model in the perspective view. And it looks pretty good. Even this less than ideal texture works very well on this model. Before wrapping up this demo, let's make a few refinements to this mesh. I'm going to do a bevel on the box so that the edges are a little bit more rounded. Applying the bevel after having done the UVs on this box is actually an easier workflow. That's why I left this part until the end.
And here's my completed box. We now have a two-dimensional image wrapping around a three-dimensional form. Don't let UV unwrapping and UV mapping intimidate you. While there is a bit of an initial learning curve, they really aren't that difficult. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.